Good afternoon, new life. Thank you for tuning in to check out the message for tonight. And today I feel like I have a message that's going to challenge all of us. I feel like God has really laid it on my heart. Because in this time that we're in right now, with quarantine and everything going on, I know it's been lifted a little bit and we've been given a little bit more freedom. But I still feel like the times are different and we're not accustomed to these. Because during this time, a lot of the plans that we've made, a lot of the goals that we set for 2020, a lot of them has been delayed, they've been postponed, and some of them we've just forgotten all entirely. And I believe during this season, it's not a time to forget about the plans and the goals that we've set, but more to focus inward on how we can better ourselves. Because a lot of the times, I believe we think like we're pretty good. Like we've been doing pretty good. Like we, we read our word daily. We spend time with God and we attend church. Some of us volunteer, some of us do community service and overall we feel good. And I think when we feel like that, we become very confident because you know that you've been in your word. You know God's hand is over you. You know you have the favor of God and you're ready for whatever may come your way. But sometimes and somehow things still fail and we wonder why and sometimes we doubt like is this really what God has for me is this really the call that he's put on my life and for example you can have some great idea you could be inspired by God and when you go to pursue the vision when you go to fulfill the plans that he set before you nothing goes right and we wonder what is wrong some of us even shift the blame to other people well they just don't understand right now maybe they're just too close-minded maybe God hasn't revealed the vision to them yet but sometimes we go as far to even as doubting God why God why did you let me pursue this why did you let me spend all my time my energy my money into this knowing that it was going to fail but rarely do we ever look inward. Rarely do we ever look if our hearts are aligned with God's desires, if our desires is what God truly wants. I remember my second year at UCF, I was taking this anatomy class and everybody told me it was gonna be tough. Anatomy is basically the study of the body and how it's structured. And we had to know where things were and how they worked. And everyone told me it was gonna be tough, but. I knew I'd be okay because if I studied, I knew I could pass easily. But this anatomy class was something very different. It was very difficult. But I spent every day, well, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the library after class. I would study everything the teacher just went over. And I would look over it up and down and try to memorize everything. I would draw out the bones and I would write down all the information trying to memorize. And when the first test came, I felt prepared and I did very well. So I decided, you know what, this is how I'm going to study for all the other tests. I'm going to go in the library three times a week. I'm going to draw out the things that I need to know and I'm going to try to memorize all the information. But when the second test came, things didn't go as well as the first test. And, and I wondered why. But I realized it's because I took the same way that I dealt with the first test the same way I dealt with the first problem to try to solve the second one. And it didn't work because the second test was completely different. Even the way the questions were worded confused me. And the way I ended up studying was not good enough for the second time around. And of course, it would have been easy to blame the professor. It would have been easy to blame how the test was worded. It would have been easy to shift the blame onto other people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it was the way that I studied that wasn't good enough because I was well capable of passing that test. All the prerequisites I took prepared me for it. And the same thing applies to our lives today. We've been accustomed to, to living one way. But after this outbreak of this virus, the COVID virus, we've been forced to change the way that we live but we are still prepared for it. So the title of my message today is Locked and Loaded. Because even though sometimes we may feel like we failed, no matter what the circumstances are, 
no matter what the circumstances may look like, the calling is still there. The vision is still there. The gift is still there. Even when we feel like giving up. God makes no mistakes. Romans 11.29 says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Meaning it wasn't a mistake you were given these gifts and these talents. You may feel down because you failed, but the vision you were given, it still has purpose. So if you have your Bibles with you, open them to Joshua 7 verse 6. Just a little background. Joshua is now the appointed leader of Israel. And God has commanded Joshua to be brave and strong. To not be afraid because God is with him just like he was with Moses. And the Israelites conquered Jericho by following the instructions of the Lord. And everything inside was going to be devoted to God. But Achan disobeyed the word of the Lord. And this made God furious with Israel. And when the Israelites went to battle with Ai, they began to lose the battle for the first time. And many of them were killed. And the people of Israel lost their courage. And this is how Joshua responded to what happened. Picking up in verse 6, it says Joshua tore his clothes. He and the leaders of Israel lay face down on the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening and threw dirt on their heads. Joshua prayed, O Master Lord, why did you bring these people across the Jordan to hand us over to the Amorites so they could destroy us? If only we had been satisfied to live on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has retreated before its enemies? When the Canaanites and all who live in the land hear about this, they will turn against us and destroy the very memory of us from the earth. What will you do to protect your great reputation? See, Joshua thought they were well equipped to defeat the people of Ai. It was a small city, and because it was so small, they only sent a small portion of the army to go to battle. There was no point in sending everyone for such a small city. Like, have you ever had too much help? And you realize, yeah, I kind of could have done this on my own. I remember one of my friends was moving, and she asked for help on our group me, and a lot of people showed up to help her. And we realized after trying to move a couple of things that we only truly needed about five people. And now we had four people trying to carry one TV and people couldn't properly move things because people were always in their way. And it, um, and it ended up becoming more and more work until some left for class and then we were properly able to move things around. Well, the Israelites just conquered Jericho. And they didn't need to tire out the whole army. So they only sent some men to the city of Ai. But after they lost, Joshua began to doubt. And he asked God in verse seven, why did you bring these people across the Jordan to hand us over to the Amorites so they could destroy us? And then he asked again, what will you do to protect your great reputation? And that's how we are sometimes. When we have a vision from God, a call on our life, a desire to expand his kingdom, first we seek God out. Then we make all these plans on how we're going to get our vision. But when something goes wrong, we begin to doubt God. Was this even God or was this just me? But if you have desires to help others and expand the kingdom of God, I tell you, this is not from yourself. Because James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So if you have desires to help, those are from God. And when Joshua is in a really critical state here, where he can begin to doubt his position of leadership, God responds to Joshua. In verse 10, it says, the Lord responded to Joshua, get up, why are you lying there face down? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenantal condiment. They have taken some of the riches 
They have stolen them and deceitfully put them among their own possessions. The Israelites are unable to stand before their enemies. They retreat because they have become subject to annihilation. I will no longer be with you unless you destroy what has contaminated you. The first point that I have for you today is before you begin to doubt God, examine yourself first. There have been so many times where I've done something knowing that God has called me to do it and it failed. And I wondered, how could this happen? What went wrong? And as time passed, I began to be able to look back at it and I realized that there was always an underlying factor. Sometimes I try to make it work my own way. Like Abraham and Sarah, where God gave them a promise. They were going to have a son. But as time began to pass and they didn't receive the son when they wanted, they decided on a plan to how they can make the promise of God become fulfilled. Sometimes I try to do it for my own glory. Like King Saul, who when he saw his men were leaving, felt compelled to sacrifice to the Lord himself instead of waiting for Samuel. And after I didn't succeed, I would always doubt, does God really want me to do this? Is it really the call that God has for me? It can't be, because if God truly wanted me to do this, how could it fail? But it was, I was just too focused on me. I wanted to get stuff done my way. And when I began to self-examine my heart, I realized it wasn't God failing. It was me trying to get the glory. It was me trying to be known. And the same thing happened to the children of Israel. Just imagine you are the leader of Israel. God has chosen you to lead and told you to be strong and brave. And there was a strong leader that was before you. And, and you're, you're kind of scared to take this position, but God tells you to be strong and brave for his reputation, for his name, and you step up to it. And you go to this great city of Jericho and God gives you instructions on how to conquer the city. And it doesn't make any sense, but you do it anyway. And then the walls of Jericho come tumbling down and everything that was found inside of Jericho was to be devoted to God. And everyone agreed, but still someone decided to steal. Someone decided to take some of that treasure for themselves. If I'm Joshua, I'm upset right now because I know there was plenty of things that me and all the other Israelites wanted to take, but we didn't do it because we knew all of this was going to be devoted to God. But Achan still decided to take the treasure for himself. So Israel began to examine themselves and God told them there was someone among them who had stolen. And Joshua set out the plans of the Lord on how to find out who it was and God revealed who it was. And because of Achan's sin, the Bible says he and all of his house, his daughters, his sons, his cattle, and all of his belongings were stoned and burned by the children of Israel. And after this, Israel's name was cleared. God was no longer angry with them. And God spoke to Joshua. In Joshua chapter eight, verse one, it said, the Lord told Joshua, don't be afraid and don't panic. Take the whole army with you and march against Ai. See, I am standing over to you, the king of Ai, along with his people, city and land. Do to Ai and its king what you did to Jericho and its king, except you may plunder its goods and cattle, set an ambush behind the city. And Joshua obeyed the commands of the Lord and set his men in position. The second point that I have for you today is, if you fail, try again until you succeed. Michael Jordan once said, I failed over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Colin Powell once said, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation hard work 
and learning from your failures. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse 16, for a righteous man falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in time of calamity. Meaning you are going to mess up. There are going to be times where it gets tough, but don't give up. And the children of Israel obeyed the commands of the Lord and they attacked the city of Ai. They began to retreat as if they were defeated. And the city of Ai was probably thinking, wow, we've defeated, the, we've defeated this great city, this great nation of Israel twice now. We have them retreating once again, and they're supposed to be the one with the true and living God. And as they begin to chase out Israel, they begin to realize their city begin to burn down behind them. And now they were surrounded. And the Lord gave the victory to Israel. And so many times when we're going through tough times or things seem to not be going right, we seek after God. But when we are finally given the victory, what do we do? Do we just take it and move on to our next goal? Do we just celebrate or do we seek out God? Do we seek him out how we did when we failed? If we're being honest, I feel like we mostly seek out God when we fail. We mostly seek out God in our time of need. And I believe that was the same for the children of Israel. That's why they were always in bondage. That's why people were always trying to come and conquer them because God knew that is what would get them to turn their hearts back to God. But after the victory, we see in verse 30, what Joshua does. In Joshua 8 verse 30, it says, Then Joshua built an altar for the Lord of Israel on Mount Ebal, just as Moses the Lord's servant had commanded the Israelites, as described in the law of scroll of Moses. It was made with uncut stones, untouched by iron tools. They offered burnt sacrifices on it and sacrificed tokens of peace. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua inscribed on the stones a duplicate of the law written by Moses. All the people, rulers, leaders, and judges were standing on either side of the ark in front of the Levitical priest who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Both resident, foreigners, and native Israelites were there. Half the people stood in the front of the Mount of Gerizim and the other half in the front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the Lord's servant, had previously instructed to them to do for the formal blessing ceremony. Then Joshua read aloud all the words of the law, including the blessings and the curses, just as they were written in the law scroll. Joshua read aloud every commandment Moses had given before the whole assembly of Israel, including the women, children, and resident foreigners who lived among them. After the loss and after the victory, we see that Joshua sought after God and he made it known among the whole nation of Israel. As he read aloud the commandments of Moses, we are going to follow God how Moses did. The third point that I have for you today is, you were chosen for a reason. Don't doubt it. After everything that happened to Israel, the Israelites conquering Jericho, then conquering the city of Ai, I believe Joshua's faith began to grow. And I believe this because two chapters later, Joshua will command the sun to stand still, and it would. After defeat of Ai, Joshua may have felt down. He may have doubted his leadership. He may have doubted that he was chosen by God to lead Israel. But the faithfulness of God began to build Joshua's faith. I remember when I first began thinking about becoming a pastor. I didn't like it because everyone told me that I was going to be one because my mom was one. And I fought with it a long time because I didn't like public speaking. I still don't like public speaking. And I didn't want to pursue something that would put me in the position to always be speaking in the public. 
But then I decided, you know what? If God has called me to do this, He is going to prepare me for it. And I had to look on the inside of me. Why am I so afraid of public speaking? What is it? And I realized there were things in my past that made me afraid to speak in front of people. Times where people would make fun of me because of the way that I spoke. But when I get up and I go to proclaim the words that God has given to me, I realize that it isn't me that's speaking. It is Him that's using me. That's why before every time I, I speak a word, before every time I am chosen to speak, I pray, God, just use me because I am just an instrument in your hands and, and your word that you've given me and never returns back void. And, and sometimes I feel like no one really understands where I'm coming from. Sometimes I feel like no one understands the message that I've prepared and I would begin to doubt the call of, the God, of God upon my life. Then there would be people who would come up to me after this, after the message, saying about how they were going through that exact thing right then and there, how they felt like they were going through that stage in life and that was the exact words of encouragement that they needed. And I would be reminded that God still uses me. I would be reminded that, that this is the call. This is what I have prepared for you. And I felt so blessed. And I felt like God was telling me, you may fail, but when I am with you, you will succeed. And I don't know who this message is for, but, have you, but you've been preparing all your life and you've been equipped. You are locked and loaded and now it's time to fire. It's time to go out and show the gifts that you have to the world. It's time to go out and show the vision that you have to the world. It's time to declare the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. You were chosen for a reason. New Life, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to be able to share the word with you tonight. I thank Pastor Mark and Lady Jane for giving me the opportunity to just be on this platform. I, be, I believe that we've been prepared and we just have to look inward to find what is truly holding us back because we are locked and loaded. Thank you and have a good night. God bless.